Shalom, shalom to my brothers and sisters who are Israelites and Gentiles. Today, I want to share with you what happened. I made a video to um, explain who is the tabernacle of witness, you know, to go along with a previous video that was made to give you the answer. But you know how the Most High Yah work? He did not want me to go in that direction today. Because after the video was made, the recording went to stop. And in the process of that, the video was lost. So I said, okay, all things happen for a reason. So today I heard my sister Deborah Brown message, which I'm glad I did because now I understand. I tell you, all things work out to the good of y'all because what we're about to discuss relates to the Feast of Tabernacles, which is so called. Again, it's given a spiritual understanding. We are beginning to see the spiritual mysteries. So let me read to you this photo first. If my people who are called by my name, which humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven and would forgive that sin and heal their land. I want you to meditate on this photo here. Most of us are familiar with it. For we know the people that was called by the Most High Name are Israelites. Because they bear His holy name. And if you notice here, He said what well, He will heal the land. Is not the land of Israel defiled? Desolate? Not fruitful, known as bearing? Do not be deceived what the heathens are doing. But just meditate on this for a while. Now we should go to the next tab. As you see today, um, I was going to do you know, the lesson on who is the tabernacle witness. That's why I didn't change the title. But the title of this word today is Israelites at Rock Bottom. And the tabernacle a witness Israelites at rock bottom and the tabernacle a witness okay um let's scroll down here okay now today's date is on the I'm trying to get the date for you is October the 8th 2017 AD and on the heathen's day of the week is Sunday. This is the great going calendar, which is Satan calendar and fulfills Daniel chapter 7. But on the most high calendar, it is the seventh month and it is, it is the 17th day of the moon. We are still in the daylight phase and then the sun has not went down. Okay. Check the video description box because what we're about to talk about, the Most High has already spoken through his prophets and prophetess. He is giving you Israelites instructions on what to do. Also, he's giving you Gentiles instructions on what to do in the last days. For we know this is the season for his son to return. It can be at any day, any week, any month, or any year from now. Okay? Also, Keep in remembrance Brody Ali Asha and his family, the, also the mother of India Kager, and Sister Catherine, nephew, known as Timothy Davis. This is just a, it's not even, I can say, um, it's like a pinch of a sand of the number of cases that the Negroes are truly going through in this time. But we are bearing the afflictions of Zion. Yes, my people are constantly oppressed, vexed, and afflicted by the Gentile nations. For we are in Esau kingdom, known as the Roman Empire, also known as the fourth beast, prophesied by Daniel. Okay, now let us begin. Let me go back to this tab. So, to give you quick insight about who is the tabernacle witness? I will make this real short and get straight to the point. 
When you read Acts chapter 7, you begin to learn that the tabernacle of witness is the Messiah. He was there too with my people in the wilderness. Okay. When you read the whole chapter of Acts chapter 7, pay close attention to verse, let me get there now, to verse 38 and to verse, let's see where can I find it, 44, and you will see the proof. Other scriptures to look at are Numbers chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, Numbers chapter 18, verse 2, and Revelations chapter 1 and 5, I mean Revelations chapter 1 verse 5, and Revelations chapter 3 verse 14. Now, when you understand who is, the is, the was, and yet to come, then you will understand how important the seventh month is. The seventh month represent the beginning and the ending, just as the Messiah, and just as our father Yahuwah. For our Father Yahuwah and the Messiah are the first and the last, known as the Aleph and Tar. They are the beginning and the ending. So when you study about the seventh month with dealing with the Most High Calendar, look up this Hebrew word called Tekrafar. Tekrafar it relates to the sun circuit, dealing with the sun year, when the sun year begins and ends. And it begins and ends in the seventh month. This is why the Feast of Tabernacles is known as the last in gathering. It is a solemn feast, but it's the final um, time where we gather our crops, our, our, where we gather all our harvests before the winter season comes in. Okay, something very important to know. Read Leviticus chapter 23, Deuteronomy chapter 16. Also, it's mentioned in the book of Exodus and Numbers chapter 28 and 29, okay, for further study. But when you go to Revelation 3 and 14, you will see that the Messiah is called the Amon, and that means so be it, okay? And proof for that, to know that it's this, that the Messiah is called that, go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. I just want to get straight to the point. So when you go to those... Um, Greek concordance, the number is G281. Okay? And how that word is pronounced in Hebrew is Strong's G281. Amen. Amen. So it's pronounced as Amen. And it comes from a Hebrew root word known as H543. But when you look at all these different areas, let me see, can I find it? I'm going to get straight to the point. This word means faithful, trustworthy, rarely, surely, and etc. I'm trying to go to the error where it has this other part. And here's this error to prove that it means faithful as well as a metaphor word, okay? But when you get a chance, definitely read this small error in print. It's under the outline of biblical usage. It gives you the history of how the word is translated from Hebrew to Greek, to Latin, to English, as well as other languages. But again, this word means to, means believe or faithful. It also means sure or truly. This word represents the Messiah for he is the faithful witness. He is the spirit of truth. And when you read the whole volume of the book, you begin to understand what I'm saying. Okay. Also, I need to mention this. When you see, when you read Revelation chapter 1, when you see like the seven eyes of Yahuwah before his throne on the seven spirits, that is talking about the Ruha HaKadash, which is the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit is known as the seven eyes or the seven spirits of Yahuwah. Also, it is known as the spirit of wisdom. That Holy Spirit too was present with my people in the wilderness, as well as our Holy Father Yahuwah and the Living Word, which is the Messiah. All three of them was present there, and you will see it. Um, to get more understanding about that, the Book of Revelation mentioned the seven eyes, but also read Isaiah chapter eleven and Second Corinthians chapter fifteen. But enough on that. And the last thing I want you to look at when you go to the Strong Concordance on um, um, Boo. 
letter Bible.org. Again, it'll show you that the word so be it or a, a man means faithful. Again, it represents the Messiah. So enough of that. Now let's get to the part of what our sister Deborah, what she was talking about, <clears throat> about Israelites, I'm saying is Israelites being at rock bottom. You may not understand what she truly mean. Okay. Because we're looking at the kind of things. No, we're looking at the earthly curses. But what about the spiritual meaning of this? Okay. The spiritual meaning of the Israelites being at rock bottom. When you go back and study Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus chapter 26, you will learn that we would become what? An astonishment to the other nations. In other words, they were like, is this the most high holy people? It cannot be because they are doing this. Oh, wait, I'm recording. They, they are doing this. They are doing that. They are not living to the word. They are in the worst spiritual state that they could be in. And I mean, look at it. My people are into murdering, killing, stealing, adultery. Serving other gods, um, bearing false witness, and etc. So, we are seeing this a lot. And the reason is, you got to go back to the beginning. Genesis, it tells you why. Because we lost the most precious gift that made Israel his firstborn son. That made Ephraim his firstborn son. Okay? That made Adam his son. That's a mystery that many is not truly understanding. We lost the heart of Yah. And because we lost the heart of Yah, we are at the rock bottom. We are at the lowest of the low. And the Father is trying. Let me see. And the Father is sending us signs. Send us messengers to let us know who we are and what state we are in now. And he had given us instructions in his word and in his prophetic message, prophetic message to get out of this state of rock bottom. But here's the mistake that we make. We think we can do it ourselves. We think that we can do it by doing things in our own righteousness for such as we think that because we keep a tour, it makes us holy and sanctified. But we don't understand the flesh that we in, we are defiled. And because the flesh that we are in and we are defiled, we cannot fulfill Torah without the spirit. These are the things that many of us are not teaching the people. We are teaching them calling things, but we're not teaching them the spiritual things that will truly redeem them and to bring them out of this rock bottom state. But again, we got to stand who's going to do this. It's not by our hands. It's nothing that we can do. But there is the Holy One that can do it. This is where we fail to see. So when we look at this rock bottom state that we are in, this is why, what's the word I can say? When we go to our fellow brothers and sisters and try to minister unto them, and we're having a hard time uh, getting them to understand the truth, and we try to figure out why, when you understand what the word was teaching us, then you know why. And when you understand that, then you know that all I am supposed to do is to be a light in this world and do the assignment that my father gave me to do. And that assignment is to only glorify him because this is not your ministry. This is your ministries. Okay. And when we give our father in heaven, his proper honor, his proper glory, then we are doing his will. Okay. But it's one more thing I need to say before we get started. 
We're looking at this rock bottom. To understand what's going to be done to get Israel out of this rock bottom state and what they truly lost, I need for you to hear me because I can't do it in this video. It'd be too long. I need for you to read Romans chapter 11. Read the whole chapter. Then I want you to read Ezekiel chapter 36. And also read Ezekiel chapter 20. And then you begin to understand whom shall deliver us out of this rock bottom state. Because we can't do this by our hand. We can't. We cannot. What's the word what I'm looking for? We think because we do X, Y, and Z, we got it, but we don't. Again, when you read those chapters, Romans chapter 11, Ezekiel chapter 36, and Ezekiel chapter 20, along with Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus chapter 6, 26, you begin to understand the Holy One. Because when you understand that he was the one that put the curse on us and he is the only one that can take the curse off of us. Then you begin to understand that it, it, it would be him to get us out of this rock bottom state. The only thing he asks us to do is written in his word and written in those prophetic messages that you need to listen. Such as I'm coming for you. And the, awakening, and the awakening call to the 12 tribes of Israel. He gives you Israelites instructions on what he wants you to do. And it's so simple, but many miss it. Okay, so here we are in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. When you get some time, read 2 Chronicles chapter 5 and chapter 7. Because... Again, we are in what the Feast of Tabernacles, known as Sukkot, known as Booth. And it also represent the carnal temple as well as the spiritual temple. Okay. Now, this, this is a period of time when King Solomon was keeping the Feast of Tabernacles and when he had built the temple. And he dedicated the temple unto Yah. Okay. So... I want to read this whole chapter to you, but because this video would be too long, I'm going to read at a, at read certain verses, okay? But notice this. I got to read verse 1 and 2 because, again, many Israelites do not understand spiritual things. Verse 1. Then says Solomon, The Most High has said that he would dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built a house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling. Now to understand what that thick darkness is. Is dealing with his Holy Spirit. Okay. Read Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2. And also read 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Because when you, when you read that chapter. You will learn that the most high Holy Spirit. Filled the temple that Solomon had built. Mm-hmm. Yes, which 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 should put you in the mind of what is happening now. What is the tap? What is the tabernacle slash temple of today? We are as written in Ezekiel chapter 11, also written in the book of John and throughout the new covenant known as the New Testament. So we are the tabernacle slash temple of where the most high spirit shall now dwell in his Holy Spirit. Okay. And I want to let you know this. Remember, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh, all three of them are spirits and they are holy. And only the Comforter, which is the Messiah spirit, can bring you the fullness of Yah. A mystery that many do not understand. Go back and read the gospel and understand what is that fullness of Yah. And if you, and if you don't understand it, Seek Yah, and he'll give you the answer. But let us continue. Let me go down to that verse. Because Solomon said a prayer. And this is a perfect time to review the prayer because it's during, it's during the time of the Feast of Tabernacle, which is within which, which is in the seventh month of the Most High Calendar. So let me find this now. Bear with me. I'm trying to find what verse it starts in. 
Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to start at verse 19. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Most High, my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee. Verse 20. That thy eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make towards this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. Mm, mm, mm. Let's keep going. Verse 22. If a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him, to make him swear, and the oath come before thy altar in this house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants by requiting the, the wicked. By re re I'm saying by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. Verse 24. If thou people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against thee and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. Verse 26, when the heaven is shut up, there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Yet if they pray towards this place and confess their name and turn from their sin, which thou doest afflict them, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel. When thou hast taught them the good way wherein thou shalt walk and send rain upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Verse 28. If there be dirt in the land, if there be pestilent, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or or of all thy people israel when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house then hear thou from heaven thou dwell in place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men again did you see that that heart again verse 31 that they may fear thee to walk in their ways so as long they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger which is not of thy people Israel, but is, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake and thy mighty hand and thou stretch thy arm if they come and pray in this house then hear thou from the heavens even from thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name and fear thee as do thy people israel and may know that this house which i have built is called by thy name notice what was done is done again Israelites, how dare you come against the strangers, vets, oppress, and afflict? For if they want to worship Yahuwah, how dare you stop them? If they want to hear the truth of Yahuwah, how dare you stop them? For even Solomon has the wisdom of Yah. 
Even Solomon prayed for the stranger. And notice what he asked in this prayer for their prayers to be heard. For even when the temple was built, there is a court where the Gentiles just go. When you study the Bible and you study the work of Joseph, you will learn that even the strangers from the other nation came and worshiped Yah. They even brought their offerings to Yah. So how dare you? What was done in the Old Testament is also done in the New Testament. A mystery that you do not understand because you are a stiff necked, hard hearted people. But y'all are going to deal with you. But let us keep going. Verse 34. If thy people go out to war against thy enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee towards the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I build for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a far, unto a land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of that captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their hearts, and with all thy soul in the land of that captivity, whither they have carried them captives and prayed towards their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and to and towards the city, which thou hast chosen and towards the house, which I had built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, thou their prayer and their, and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which has sinned against thee. Now, Israelites, I don't know about you, but these three verses, 37, 38, 39, is telling you what to do. This is what our father asked us to do. For when he awakened us, I don't give you my testimony. When he awakened me because of what the word hurt me, I realized I was wicked. I broke every commandment in that Bible. I serve of other gods because I was indoctrinated by the Roman Christianity. I was an adulteress. I was a murderer. I was a liar. I broke and I even did not keep the Sabbath. And when the word made me realize that I was not good, that I was wicked, and that I was in sin, it make you humble yourselves. And you notice he keep talking about that heart. He knows your thoughts, your intention, the things that the people cannot hear, the things that the people cannot see what you're saying within yourself. He knows who are his true servants and who are his children. And in the prophetic message, in, in his prophetic message, he tells you what to do, Israelites, and you still will not listen. Y'all still doing your own agendas, forming schools, giving teaching lessons, but you won't share his divine message. Again, go in the video description box and watch your Hoover prophetic message. I am coming for you part one and part two. And also the awakened call to the 12 tribes of Israel. Go and listen to that message. He tells you what to do, but you make it something that's so simple, so hard because you won't listen. Because you're being stiff necked and have a hardened heart. But let us keep going. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to read verse 39. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, Maya, let I beseech thee. Thy eyes be open and let thy ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Yah, God, into thy resting place, thou, and the art of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Most High God, be clothed with salvation and let the saints rejoice in goodness. O Yah, God, turn not away the face of thy anointed. Remember the mercy of David. Thy servant. 
So this ends the word for today. I hope you truly understand why the Israelites are at rock bottom. I hope you understand who is the tabernacle of witness. Please read those scriptures I have given unto you. Please read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. To, un to truly understand what is the feast of tabernacles known as Sukkot. To understand the spiritual mystery of this. Please do not be stiff necked and have a hardened heart. He gave us the word. And he gave us the spirit. But we have to be willing to receive it. We have to be willing to enter into that new covenant. To understand these spiritual things. To understand these spiritual mysteries. Man cannot give it to you. Books cannot give it to you. Only Yah can give it to you. And when he give it to you, Israelites and Gentiles, he give you his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. Something that the world did not understand. Well, continue to preach the gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For we are truly in the season for the Messiah to return. For we are in the seventh day from Adam, which is the 12,000 year from creation. And make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10. And the people are Israelites and Gentiles, males and females, bond and free, circumcised and, and uncircumcised, Scythians, barbarians, etc. And baptize them in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. For the Lamb set the example of the water baptism and of the Holy Spirit baptism. And the apostles continued them as confirmed and written in the book of Acts and in the New Testament. And baptism is evident in the Old Testament. Water and spirit. Something else that some of the Israelites do not understand. All right, my family, I love you all and Shalom. And do you know who that peace that is with you? Think about it. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. And when you get a chance, watch Sister Deborah Brown messages. It would greatly edify your soul. Shalom.